and I mentioned in the engine build video I would do a separate video on how I wire these up. Our distributors that I use they come from Morgan Automotive Detail and I buy them through Ted's Modeling Marketplace. This video is not sponsored or I don't get anything for saying this it's just I like their products so I use them and every time I place an order with them I always order a couple distributors. And I like these ones so much because each individual cap socket has its own wire. They're not just bundled together so at this scale they look as realistic as one could possibly get. And this particular one here came from a dual drive unit as it's got two distributor caps for one distributor shaft. A lot of the top fuel guys they run these and I started buying them just because I could get two distributor caps for a discount. At least I think it's a discount. A single distributor is five dollars this dual drive unit is nine dollars and really since all I ever use anyways is distributor caps it seems like I'm buying two of them and saving a dollar and the single drive units as you can see they come with the shaft And I kind of had to glue that in crooked so that I could run the radiator hose. Once it's all installed, you can't tell. So don't worry about that. And since I started buying just the caps, I'm using the existing shafts that come with most kits. Like this one is built into the timing cover. And if it will ever focus, yeah, right there, right where the edge of that screwdriver's pointing, underneath the idler for the supercharger. And to mount them to the factory kit parts, all I did was drill a small hole in the bottom of the cap, and it just fit right on. And these kits, they also come with a heavier gauge wire, and they are wire, as you can see there's copper inside there. All that does is allow it to hold its shape whenever you bend it, which I really like. All that does is just help it hold its shape once it's all installed where you want it. And they included this stuff so you could make the boot that actually goes over the spark plug. And I would love to use it, however, with that wire in there, there's really no way to attach them. It says you're supposed to just use super glue, but super glue does not hold them. I have yet to find a way to take the copper core out without destroying the outer jacketing, so I just don't use them. And that's okay though, because on the Hemi there's an inset and a valve cover that would hide the boot anyway, and on a regular V8 it's all hidden within the exhaust, so you can't see them. For those of you that do not want to buy a pre-made distributor, this is how I used to do it. Most kits will come with a cap. All you need to do is get your little pin vise and drill out each individual little socket and run you some wire through them. I don't do that anymore so I don't have any spare wire lying around to show you, but it's very thin. It's like 35 gauge wire. It's kind of hard to come by if you could find it. I will tell you, it is easier just to buy them pre-made. Now as far as the actual wiring goes, the first thing you're going to want to do is spread all the wires out and count them, make sure you're all there. I ordered one for a V6 one time, so don't make that mistake. Since I showed it in the build video, I'm not going to repeat it again here, but all I'm leaving out is just me actually drilling the holes for the plug wires. The first thing you want to do is snake them all out and put them where they want to go. On a Hemi, actually for all Mopar V8s, the firing order is 184, 
36572. The distributor spins counterclockwise. So we just wire them all up in order. I should also mention the cylinder order. The left hand bank is all the even numbers, the right hand bank is all the odd numbers. So the left hand there, where my thumb is, that cylinder is 2, 4, 6, and 8, and on the other side is 1, 3, 5, 7. And that is pretty standard for most American V8s. Ford is the only odd man out. And those of you paying attention, I did wire that out of order. See how whenever I let go of these, they kind of spring back? I got some of them confused. It wasn't much though, I just got six and four out of order. So I just swapped them around real quick. Now that they're all in their happy little home, we're going to trim them and make them look good. And I like to leave mine a little bit long so that they droop down over the valve covers there. It just looks a little more authentic like the real Hemi did. And the only advice that I could really offer here is to leave the wires long because you could always shorten them by stuffing them further into the valve cover. So I'll say it again, cut them longer than what you actually want them to be. I realized I probably should have sped this up like I do with the rest of my footage because this is kind of boring.
It helps to have a reference nearby just so you know how long to make them. Remember, you could shorten these by just stuffing them further into the valve cover. Now just repeat for the other side. And your scrap clippings, do not throw those away. If you do this enough, you'll end up with a collection of them of various colors, black and red. So you could repurpose these as battery cables any kind of cable really and the heavier gauge ones they could be heater core hose just don't throw anything away because you could reuse it for almost anything The last thing we're going to do is we're going to sharpen up a toothpick here to get it nice and pointy. Just pointy enough to fit down inside the spark plug hole. Now these are wire and they're kind of bent into place, but I like to put just a very tiny dab of super glue just for a little added extra insurance. That's it guys, it's that simple.